right, research scientist at the University of Manchester, Alex Keshavarzi, joins me now from London. Alex, uh, you're working on uh, uh, some important Muon experiments over at Fermilab, so pleasure to have you on. I'm super excited about this. All right, uh, let's start off with the basics. Um, uh, one out of these four fundamental forces, gravity, I understand if I drop this set of paper, it'll fall to the ground. How do muons affect our life? Yeah, so uh, like you said, there are four forces that govern all the discovered particles in the universe, gravity, electromagnetism, and the two nuclear forces. And with the known particles, they make up our best theory of the fundamental building blocks of the universe that we call the standard model. Now, muons, which, as you said, is what our experiment is concerned with, is one of those fun known fundamental particles. It's just like an electron, um, which is obviously the building block of atoms, only it's 200 times heavier. Um, the interesting thing about muons, as with electrons, is that they have their own internal magnet, and the strength of that internal magnet is defined by the other particles that they interact with. Um, and so that's particularly interesting, because what we can do is take the theory of all the known particles and very, very precisely calculate the strength of the muon's internal magnet. That we've already done. And this measurement that, that has been released yesterday is now a very, very precise measurement of the muon's internal magnet. We've compared those and found that they disagree. And this is what hints at the fact that there could be new particles or new forces contributing to the strength of the muon's internal magnet. Alex, tell me this. Uh, we know, uh, what do we know um, of, this, of this new force other than the fact that it sort of um, um, influences other muons? Well, I think at first we should be quite clear. We haven't discovered a new force. What we've done is shown with extreme likelihood that by comparing our very, very best precise theory with a very precise new measurement, that there's something about the fundamental structure of the universe that we really don't understand. And if this new measurement and the discrepancy between the theory and the new measurement stand the test of time, it'll be proof that there is something missing in our fundamental understanding of what the universe is made of. Now, this could be a new force, or it could be a new particle, and in general, it could influence the universe around us and all of its contents. But it's really just that hint that there's something missing that is the real uh, pinnacle finding of this experiment. I know this is super exciting, but I mean, uh, and I'm sorry if I'm sounding, uh, could sound a little skeptical, but I mean, could this all be a fluke? Well, uh, at first, I think it's important to note that this difference was first measured by a different experiment at the Brookhaven National Laboratory, Laboratory in uh, the US 20 years ago. This means it's the second time now that this event or this measurement or this discrepancy has been independently measured. Um, secondly, this rele the release of this result has taken so long. We took this data three years ago, and that's the reason it's taken that long is because we've spent that three years checking and rechecking and rechecking the result to make sure that we've cross-checked every single minute part of the experiment that we know of. And the result is so precise that there's only a 1 in 40,000 chance that this could be a fluke. Now, in particle physics, the gold standard that we set our discoveries by, which we call the five standard deviation level, is a 1 in 3.5 million chance. So we're not quite there yet. Um, but it's important to note that we, this, the result that we presented yesterday is only a small portion of the data that we've taken. The experiment's still running now, and it's still taking more data. And the analysis of the remaining data will confirm for certain whether we've reached that discovery milestone or not. I am not a betting man, but if I were, I would definitely take those odds. All right, uh, I want to ask you, I mean, what are the implications? I mean, what is this, um, you know, if it's a new law in physics, uh, whether it's a new particle or new force, I mean, what's it all going to mean for the future? Well, fundamentally, it means that we'll understand more about the universe around us and its general phenomena. So it, it could, for example, answer one of some or one of the currently unanswered questions. So there are several hints that the standard model of particle physics, this theory that is our best theory, is incomplete. One of the examples that I can give is that when we look out to the stars and we look at galaxies, galaxies actually rotate a lot faster than we expect them to. Um, and we don't know why that is. And we think that it's due to something called dark matter. And this experiment, if it, if it indicates that there is a new force or a new particle, it could give us an understanding of why these phenomena occur. So that new particle could contribute to the fact that these, you know, it could be this source of dark matter that is causing these galaxies to rotate faster than we, than we expect them to. Um, I think, put simply, it will simply be a, a new era in our fundamental understanding of the universe. Um, Alex Kishavari. 
uh, Keshavarzi, thank you very much for speaking to us. I do uh, appreciate this. Uh, it's a fascinating topic, so thank you very much for coming on the show and explaining to us.